Hi, my name is Cindy Rang with the Fabric Patch in Efreda, Washington. You can find us at fabricpatch.net. And today we're going to go through what you need to start Jake's Bouquet Quilt Block of the Month. Okay, so first of all, when it comes to a block of the month, I know that there's a lot of shops that are doing this, and we would always like to encourage you to shop local, go into your local quilt shop, and take classes with them. I think that that is a lot of fun because there's that camaraderie with other quilters. You get to hang out a little bit, see what somebody else is doing, um, share tricks and techniques. This is not as ideal because there isn't as much back and forth. That being said, you can always email us. You can email info at fabricpatch.net and we can um, email you back, we can send pictures, we can talk on the phone. Uh, if you're uh, cruising along on this and you have some questions, we, we love to hear from you. The other thing is that um, we're going to show you our way of doing things, which may or may not be different. Uh, when it comes to hand embroidery, there are as many st styles and as many tricks as there are people talking about it. So as we go through the 12 blocks, I'm going to show you a couple of different things. Um, um, but I'm going to tell you that for me personally, there's one way that I do things. I've tried all of the other ways, but I find that for my hands, for my eyesight, for the way that I hold the hoop, I find one thing that I like um, and it may not be the same thing that you like. So that is the other fun thing about working through a block of the month is you might hear some tips or tricks that you hadn't heard before and um, see some new ideas. Um, that being said, you'll hear me say this a lot, if what you're doing, if you get consistent good results, don't change it. Don't do what somebody else is telling you to do. So only try something different if you don't like the results you're getting. Okay. So, um, all we're going to do is we're just going to talk briefly today and then we're going to start this block of the month. Each month we're going to work through um, uh, in the order that she's doing. Whenever I start a block of the month, I tend to start with the easiest block first and we didn't really do that. Uh, we're starting with one that's a little bit more difficult, but I think it's not going to matter. Um, and what we'll do is each month there is a uh, embroidered block and then there's also a pieced block and that's what we'll do each month but I thought at first any of you guys that are doing this with us and any of you that have ordered the kits or the patterns I thought we would just take a minute and go through that if you're new to us I think we do have a couple of kits left maybe uh, we have some of the patterns left uh, we do not have thread kits left so that is not an option the fabric itself, um, it's this. It's just the prettiest fabric. I really love script anyway in anything, and I love all of the little drawings. And what's kind of fun about this is that, and that's a little awkward maybe for you to see, but a lot of these little birds and flowers are some of the things that we're going to be stitching. So the fabric is pretty awesome. We do have, um, at the time of this taping, I think we do have some extra fat quarter packets of this fabric left, and you could certainly put the quilt together with that. Um, this one behind me, though, is Stash Buster. This is one of Brianna's patterns, and so um, we use this a lot when there's a fabric that we really want to show off because it just uses some pretty large pieces and you get to see everything that you're looking at. So anyway, all right, so if you guys are doing this, you should have the pattern. And I know some um, stores, they'll give you just your first pattern and the fabric that goes with that, and you just get something every month, and that works out pretty well. For us, we have sent all of it to you at once. And so if you go through, one thing I want to mention with the pattern is that <clears throat> this one is the one that you'll be tracing. And then this one is larger, don't trace this. This is just a great big color picture of what we're doing so you can see close up the stitches. Um, I am going to show you some fun stitches as we go, but um, if you prefer to just do a simple back stitch on all of it, it gives it a really cute kind of a vintage sort of a look to it. And um, I think that that's kind of what I'm gonna do. So a um, little spoiler alert there. Um, so some of the things that you might need, uh, she does talk about it on the pattern, the things that she suggests, and I agree with her um, 100%. Um, except she uses something called Shape Flex 
on the back of her embroidery. Uh, and again, it's one of those things that everybody does something different. I tend to like diaper flannel on the back of mine, but you do need something. You have to make a decision about what you want. So when we do our hand stitching, we just need a second layer back behind that. It hides all of our little trailing stitches. It hides um, any of the tails that are left. And so it can be just a piece of muslin. It can be a piece of diaper flannel. It can be a piece of batting. It can be shape flex, doesn't really matter, um, but something, something without a pattern to it and something that's not going to add a massive amount of bulk. So um, you'll want to have some of that. Uh, you don't need very much of it. I would think a yard would be plenty. Um, the other thing she suggests is the Micron pen, and I agree with that. Um, I She says a Micron 0 0.01. I like a Micron 0 0.05, but, or no, she says 0.1. And I like 0 0.05, which is teeny, teeny, tiny. And so what the what it is, is it's a permanent pen. And you'll see it when we do our very first block. Um, when we trace our pattern, and you don't have to do any of that beforehand. Uh, we'll do this together when we do our first block. And I'll show you the different things with the pens. But if you do a permanent pen, it is fairly critical that your stitching be accurate because your thread has to lay over the top of that permanent ink or else you'll see it. Um, not to worry, I feel like that's okay. And the size of a 0 .05 is the same size as two strands of floss. So you won't see it and it doesn't disappear or anything. The other thing that a lot of people like are the um, friction heat away markers. If you feel a little bit stressed and you don't know if you're going to stitch right on top of that line, these go away with heat. But if you're somebody who stitches in the car during travel, like I do, if you leave that in a hot cart and you go in for a taco, when you come out, your marks are gone. Um, little known fact, you, if you put it in the freezer at below 17 degrees for an hour, the mark will come back magically, which is really nice. But again, if you're on the road, that's probably not an option. So anyway, so I agree. Uh, I like a Pigma, a Pig, Pig, Pigma Micron marker. Um, another option is um, a wet erase marker, and if you decide to do a wet erase marker, and I tend to not do that because I just don't want to go through all of that trouble at the end uh, when I'm done with my piece. I don't want to have to wash it or have to do anything weird, um, but this is the one that I prefer because it is a teeny, teeny, tiny little line, and it comes out with just, I mean, I can lick my finger and touch it, and it'll go away. And again, I'll show you all of this in our first class, but um, before we do our first class, you probably are going to want to make... Um, a little bit of a decision. You can also use a pencil, but again, that's why I don't use a pencil. For a pencil to mark to come off, you have to use soap and water, and mm, I'm not interested in that. Um, some people say that they have to wash their piece anyway because it gets dirty, and you know, I think that that can be true, and there were times that I used to do that, but now I am very, very careful. I wash my hands before I get started, and I don't eat while I'm stitching and it's been a whole lot better. So anyway, another thing to think about. Um, you are gonna need a little glue stick for some of your applique pieces and whatever you like with that. Um, there's all kinds of really good ones. Just make sure that it really is a fabric appropriate glue. Don't get a glue stick from the dollar store. It's not the same thing. Um, and what's nice about these glue sticks, um, we have some that are kind of a fluorescent yellow and some that are a fluorescent pink. What's nice about that is you can tell right where you've put the glue. It does dry clear, it dries soft, it washes out, you never know it's there. It's a really good um, glue stick to have. Okay, the other thing on the list is needles. So um, if you got a kit from us, you did get a package of needles that we put in there and I believe that we put in a, um, an assortment. The reason that we do that is because um, a pattern might say that they have you that they're using a size five embroidery needle or a size seven or a size nine, but that doesn't mean that that's what you have to use. It just means that that's what they're using. I tend to use a size seven embroidery needle. It's the one that I prefer. It actually is also the one that Corey prefers. It's what she said on the back of hers. But 
Um, the size needle has to do with the size of your hand, whether or not you have long fingernails, if you have any arthritis, it's just what is most comfortable in your hand. And for me, it happens to be a size seven embroidery needle. And if I pick up something different, I know it immediately that it's not fitting in my hand properly. So find the size that works well for you. The other thing that people will ask about is they'll say, well, I don't know what size needle I want. I need something with a big eye. We're going to talk about that as we stitch, but what happens is the shaft of that needle has to make a big enough hole for the eye of the needle and that thread to go through it. If not, you are pulling, 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 pulling. And so it kind of doesn't really work that way. You, um, um, to find a great big eye, it's going to be a great big needle, and that's not what you're going to want. What you want instead is some way to have your needles easily threaded. I love my little desktop needle threader. I um, use this all the time. They do break, um, but I think I used mine for about three or four years before I finally broke that little filament. But you know, they're inexpensive. What are they? They're like 16 bucks. Um, they're kind of nice to have. There's a couple different brands and a couple different styles. This is the one that I like. Um, but uh, I use this all the time. The other thing that I have that I absolutely cannot live without, and I did not bring mine, I didn't get one from the front, but it's the dome needle threader. Um, I love that thing. It holds eight threaded needles. So if my daughter comes over or my granddaughter, that's what I have them do is thread these needles for me and load them in there. And I'll show you when we do our first class how that works, but it's really nice. I have two. One always has black loaded in it and the other one has my colors and I'll show you how it works. But it's really, really nice because you can just pull it out and off you go. And then when you're done and it's empty, it's just time to reload it and you don't have to stop what you're doing, get your special glasses, get all frustrated because threading a needle can be a little bit of a booger. The uh, oh, the other thing about needle is that she is suggesting some applique needles and we'll kind of talk about that also. Um, and I think in your kit from us, you may have gotten a, a straw needle, a size 10 or 11 straw needle. That's what we use as an applique needle. Um, teeny, teeny, tiny little high um, eye and a teeny, teeny, tiny little thread. So I'll show you uh, what how we use those. Um, Last thing is a hoop. So um, again, hoop, whatever is comfortable for you, whatever you have, I tend to like one about this size. Uh, this is how I like to hold it. Um, uh, some people like a bigger one because they don't like to hoop over something that they've stitched. But if you've done a nice job of your stitching, it doesn't hurt it to put that over the top. And I find that if my hoop is too large, it doesn't fit properly in my lap. So again, when we go through our first class, I'll show you a couple little tricks about that, but um, we do have some hoops or that's an easy thing to go ahead and pick up. All right, and all of these things that we talked about, I'm gonna demonstrate these all again in our first class, but all of these things, if you don't have them at home and you don't find something similar, they're all linked below, or I'm sure your local quilt shop would have these things also. So um, I want to talk just for a moment um, about your kit. So if you do not have a kit, um, we'll go through the stuff anyway and show you the things that you're going to want to collect. So if you bought from us the fabric kit, here's what I wanna tell you you are going to have kind of a hard time figuring out all of this business and matching up all of this business. I'm just gonna tell you right now, don't do it. Don't do it because you're gonna go, wait, 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 wait. Why is this here? Why is this here? So we, um, it was a team of four of us putting all of this together and um, we feel extremely confident that this is exactly what we need, um, but uh, we did make a couple of changes. And so one thing I want to mention is the solids. So we did do the solids that we thought would work well. Um, and she lists off 10 different solids. Um, and so we picked them. This is what we came up with. And we came up with these. She might have described it something a little bit different. Magenta, peacock, blossom, cactus. Um, and I think we labeled what we said was magenta, peacock, um, you know, whatever. Uh, whatever all of her colors were and you may or may not agree but what we wanted to do is we wanted to pick the ones that we thought would go with her fabric so that was what we did 
we picked these pieces and we use really very little of these they're not used very often um, we feel absolutely like you have enough if for some reason there's a color here that you really don't care for maybe you want to take out the pinks and the magentas do whatever you want to do it doesn't matter just take it out, find something out of your stash that you want to exchange with it, and it'll be great. The other thing that I want to mention is that if you look at the quilt, the picture of the quilt, it is fairly scrappy. So if you take out five different pieces of these solids and replace it with five different things, no one's going to care. It's going to look fantastic. doesn't matter. Whatever color aesthetic you like. The other thing is that the other pieces that she used, what she was trying to do, I'm just going to tell you, I love Corey. I'm going to tell you, she wanted to use every single piece of her fabric. There is not a single piece out of her line that is not in this kit. And there's a couple of them that you're only going to cut a two inch by three inch piece. But that way you have all of it. So what I'm going to say is that I think we sent them all out in these little boxes. Keep that stuff in the box. If you find something out of your stash that you think looks really similar, that you really like, it has the same aesthetic, maybe a little softer color, whatever, throw it in that box. It doesn't matter. Um, and then as we piece the blocks, I'm going to tell you right now, I've already started piecing the blocks, and I have made some changes. I've decided that that dark, dark, dark teal, I don't have it in my quilt. And so I've swapped some things out. So we have given you a kit um, pretty similar to what she said, but we did make a couple of changes. And so what I'm going to say is that what's in your kit is what you paid for. Um, but if you're saying, wait, wait, she said three quarters of a yard or she said um, a fat eighth, but I got a fat quarter. Everybody's kit is exactly the same. And as I go through it, you'll see that what I have in my kit is the same thing that you have in your kit, but it might be a little bit different from what she says on the back. If you really feel like we messed something up, please call. What I'd like to do is just kind of FaceTime and I'll show you what we did. And super happy to put something in the mail to you if there's something else that, if there's something that we forgot or something else that you want. I think we have most of the fabric still here. We ordered multiple bolts of each one of her fabrics knowing that it was going to take us several months to work through this um, little project. Um, and then the other pieces are, um, she has some larger pieces of a white, a cream, and then this um, fun little print piece. So if you wanted to get any extra what I would maybe suggest would be the white and the cream. Uh, we're stitching on both of these colors. The other thing that she mentions is that um, if you got the whole thing together as a kit, uh, she wants you to cut some pieces first before you really start whacking into it or you won't have enough. And she mentions that um, in the inside here. And I am gonna mention that on our first block that um, when we do our first class that um, if you just start cutting weird strips off, it's going to be weird for your border. All right, so that's your fabric kit. And then the other thing I want to talk about your thread kit. Don't even, again, don't match what she says here with what you have here. Um, there's 54 different threads that she is talking about. And I went through looking at things. I can't figure out 54 threads that she used. And this is what I think. And again, I love Corey. I love her pattern. I love the process. I love all of it. But what happens sometimes is when we're working on a pattern and working on a project, we save everything. At the end, that's when we write the pattern. After we've pieced everything, after we've trimmed everything and we know what those sizes are going to be. Same thing with the threads. We might only have done, you know, four French knots out of that yellow, but that's what we used. And so she listed everything that she used so that if you want to make sure that your um, uh, quilt top looks exactly like hers, she's telling you what she used. Um, it, it's not. <laughs> it's a little bit different. But here's why. A lot of that stuff, um, so she's using Cosmo Solid, Cosmo Seasons. Cosmo Seasons is the variegated one. And then she's using this um, Sue Spargo Eleganza uh, Pearl Cotton and then um, something else. Oh, the Elena Wool. Um, it is almost $200 worth of thread. I did not do that. I think that I think that I would spend my money a little bit differently. I also know that for a fact I have got some 
form of this thread at home in my stash and I could find a pretty pink or a pretty variegated blue or ooh, I don't have that I'll make it a pretty variegated periwinkle so you would be able to do this with us without any problem probably going through your stash and picking some pretty fabrics that you think all go together finding some background pieces and finding a smattering of thread so what I did and we'll talk about this as we go through is I picked a bunch of different types of thread because I think it is important to stitch on a couple threads and see what you like and see what you don't like and so I put in here um, some of the stuff that I put in is some Edmar thread and Edmar thread is this kind of shiny tight uh, weave um, uh, thread down at the bottom. I love Edmar thread. I think it's beautiful. It comes in both solids. It comes in seven different weights. It comes in variegated. Um, they've been around for a long time. It's uh, um, Edwin, I think is his name. Ed Edwin and Maria is who makes up Edmar. They're from Idaho. She is Brazilian and she teaches Brazilian um, hand embroidery and they are absolutely experts. So anyway, this stuff down here is Edmar thread and it's in some of the colors. The other stuff here we have a lot of Cosmo thread and we have a lot of DMC thread. And so there's some variegated colors and some of them are so similar. Um, but I put in a bunch of different things so you have w quite a wide variety of things to choose from. Everything is two strand and so um, um, there are a bunch of these that I'm not going to use. I probably won't use some of the brighter colors that she's using, but again, um, we all will be able to make choices as we go. Now, the other thing that I did, because I think it's really fun and I want you guys to be familiar with it, are these petites. So I put some petites in there. She did not talk about petites, but I want you to know about them. And so the deal with the petites is this is by Sulky Thread and it is essentially a two strand. It's a 12 weight, so it's two strands of embroidery floss on a spool. So you don't have to separate your thread, you don't have to do anything, just unspool it, thread it, and you're good to go. So I put a variety of colors in here. So again, don't even try to start checking off marking 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 you're not going to figure out what I meant and which one was which because it some of them will match probably half of them are kind of what she was calling for and the others um, it is um, it is about well we gave you like a crazy crazy good deal but it is about um, an eighth of the price of what this full kit would have been so anyway um, all right, so let's see. Any questions that we think we might have? So you should have your pattern. You should have your fabric. You should have some thread and some notions. If you're just now thinking you want to start this, you've got a little bit of time to at least get the pattern um, and at least get some background stuff and start pulling some fabrics and putting some fabrics together. You can see that um, the picture of the quilt uh, what we've got going on is kind of quite a large variety of colors. It's really um, garden colors is really probably what I would call it. And um, her line, Brianna, what's the line of fabric called? It's called Jaybird. Jaybird. Oh yeah, I knew that. It's called Jaybird. <laughs> it's I knew that. Um, it's named after her daughter. So um, anyway. All right, I think that's it. If you have any questions, uh, email us, info at fabricpatch.net. Uh, you can give us a call at the shop, but uh, we are Pacific Time, open 10 to 5, Wednesday through Saturday. And we're going to start, the, we're going to give you a little bit of time to gather everything together. And our first block, block one, will be up in about two weeks. So uh, we'll get started. See you soon. Thank you for watching our video. We invite you to leave a comment, hit the like button, or better yet, subscribe to our channel so you never miss an episode. You can also visit our Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, or Pinterest pages, or find all of those things and our online store at fabricpatch.net.